Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Quattrock. I'm the director of the Blue and Gray Hospital Association, and today is part of our Gettysburg Remembrance Day weekend uh, activities. Uh, yesterday, we went and visited Camp Letterman and the George Bushman Farm. Today, we're doing the Confederate side, um, and we're here at the Lee Equestrian Statue in the Virginia Monument to remember uh, those that were on the Confederate side that came out here um, and gave their last full measure uh, you know, out here in the field. And of course, with the Virginia Monument, the, main, the big thing is Pickett's Charge. Um, if you look the field behind us, um, is the field that uh, Pickett's Division marched across. Uh, Pickett's Division was lined up as early as 9 a.m. on the morning of July the 3rd, thinking that um, they were gonna launch an attack early in the morning, coordinated with uh, an attack by Richard Yule's Corps over where Culp's Hill was. Um, unfortunately, that portion didn't happen. About 4 a.m. in the morning, um, the 12th Corps artillery opened up um, under Henry Slocum. You know, 12th Corps under Henry Slocum decided that he wanted to get rid of the Confederates that were along the base of Culp's Hill. So he opened up their artillery, his artillery at 4 a.m. in the morning, and all the troops that were there as far as Confederate troops were tied up. Their ammunition um, was exhausted and there was no way to bring in reinforcements or uh, ammunition they had to would have to go across Rock Creek. So that portion of the attack, you know, a coordinated portion of the attack didn't happen. So the bombardment starts here a little after about one o'clock in the afternoon here. Um, about 149 pieces of artillery open up along Seminary Ridge and the Peach Orchard up, you know, fire along Cemetery Hill. Um, the troops uh, that were lined up as early as 9 a.m. in the morning, it was a hot day. So troops that were, and they were out in the open without any cover. The only troops that were under any kind of cover was Armistead's Brigade. Everyone else was out in the open. So guys were already getting heat stroke. Um, during the artillery bombardment, they're getting shelled. Um, out there, like you know, out in the open, and then when the attack occurs um, and marches off the field, you know, march across the field, Pickett's division basically loses about 50% casualties. Um, you know, as far as across going across the field. Um, so those that made it back here, what happens is on July the 4th, Lee decides that they're going to retreat. The I should say the night of July the 3rd. Lee meets with General John Imboden, whose cavalry brigade is the only brigade that's in reserve uh, that hadn't been used. And he basically makes the decision to retreat the next day. When they retreat on July the 4th, they start their retreat. It's in a torrential downpour. It's virtually pouring. And um, they basically throw whatever wounded that could travel in wagons, whatever wagons they had and whatever wagons they could find. Um, and they leave Gettysburg. They leave Gettysburg by two ways. The wagon train of wounded, what's called the wagon train of misery, they leave on the Cashtown Road heading towards uh, Williamsport, Maryland, and where they wind up is Williamsport, Maryland. The main portion of the army, along with Lee's supply train, his uh, supply, you know, wagons, they go across the Fairfield Road, Route 116, and they wind up at uh, Falling Rivers, uh, Virginia. When Lee gets to Falling Rivers, Virginia, he finds that his pontoon bridges were basically burned by the Union cavalry. He only had one pontoon, and so he had to buy time to build enough pontoon bridges to get his army across and to get his wounded across, as far as ferried across down at Williamsport. So he built an elaborate line of trenches to hold off the Army of the Potomac, and he does. Um, and basically the Army, the uh, Lee was able to get all of his army across by July the 15th. So even though we know this battle to be three days, July the 3rd, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, the campaign actually started June the 1st and went all the way until July the 15th. So uh, we come here and we definitely remember, you know, definitely the Confederate side and all those who uh, died here, you know, as far as in the battle and, of course, uh, the medical staff that was here as well. So... Uh, would you do the honors?
recover, recover arms. Okay, and that's the conclusion of our ceremony. Thank you for joining us.